Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramp, and I'm here to usher you into the weekend. It is the first weekend in January, the first weekend in 2019. So here are some of the things I'm going to be talking about. It's also First Friday, so I'm going to talk about a whole bunch of art stuff as well. And it is Flagship Friday, so I have a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot to talk about. But let's kick things off with a little bit of weather. It's warmer out there than it's going to be uh, most winters, so it's going to be pretty warm with a high of 41 degrees. It's currently 20 degrees with that fog rolling in. Some of the heat's keeping uh, some of the clouds down, uh, so you're going to see some more fog happening today. But as we warm up, it's going to start clearing out. It's going to be mostly cloudy, though, with lows into the 26, uh, as high as 29 for a low, but then it's pretty much going to be stagnant, pretty much 30s. But by Sunday, you can see a 30% chance of snow. By Monday, you see that 40%, so we might be seeing snow after the weekend. But... Let's go check out uh, some of the slopes. Um, this is from onthesnow.com, and I'm going to present to you guys a nice little uh, representation of what kind of snow you guys can expect from Whitefish Big Sky Ski Resort. So it looks like Whitefish had four inches of snow in the last 24 hours with seven inches in the last 72 hours. All these are green, and they're good to go, and they tell you about the amount of inches they have at the base and the peak. Um, so 20 to 65 inches, 31 to 40, uh, 54 inches, and so on and so forth. It seems like most of these places haven't had any too uh, fresh powder, but they that will probably change over the weekend. All right, guys, let's talk about some news. Um, have you guys heard of uh, Josh Slotnick? So uh, if you guys haven't heard um, and you ha uh, didn't vote this year in the uh, Missoula County elections, uh, Josh, Josh Slotnick uh, was actually voted in uh, just this last, uh, w was just, uh, I guess he just started his job this week. And that's some of the news that are happening. Uh, the county commissioners the other day, uh, as the new year and a new member joins, Gene Curtis, who has held that seat for uh, 18 years, lost a primary back in summer, and there was no opponent that went against Slotnick for the uh, general election in November, so he won without any opposition. Um, so he will be joining both uh, Cola Rowley and Dave Strohmeyer uh, since they threw their support back in the summer. Slotnick previously co-founded Garden City Harvest and the University of Montana's program in Ecological Agricultural and Society, or Peas Farm. Um, he holds a degree in philosophy, served uh, with the Peas Corps in Thailand, um, earned a master's in agric uh, agriculture extension, and is a well-known lecturer. Um, there are a lot of communities around Missoula County um, as a whole, uh, and while some meetings are not required for the county, uh, the county does commit uh, to being available to the people of Missoula County and have some representatives to attend meetings whether they need to be there or not. A lot of small things uh, th that make up each member differently, but as a whole functioning body behind go uh, city county government with Cola Rally as the chair of the board, so she took over for Jean Curtis as chair of Missoula County Commissioners. Um, which I believe they had their meeting just uh, the other day. They usually have them on Thursdays in the uh, Missoula County Courthouse, and they're usually sometime in the afternoon around 2, 2.30, so you can check those out and find out more. But, of course, you can always log on to MCAT.org to watch those meetings on Channel 190. All right. Enough of a plug for that. Northwest Energy uh, went to what seemed to be a down power line near Townsend, Montana, but what they discovered will soon surprise you. Um, around 4.30 p.m. the other day, uh, Northwestern Energy crew went down off Highway uh, 287, two miles south of Townsend, where they found two men in life-threatening conditions in a crashed plane. Uh, what started out as a uh, flight out of Bozeman soon turned into a crash landing, which left 130 people without power. Um, the two seriously injured member, men were life flighted to the two different hospitals with the life threatening conditions. A piece of the tail was found by the Northwestern Energy crew um, near the river, and the plane was located by yelling uh, to see and until the two men responded. In um, national news, as you I've thought moon landings were done with. Uh, China has been landing on the moon sporadically since 2016, and they just landed there just recently. Uh, China has landed on the far side of the moon, a more uncharted part of the U.S. never touched down in the late 60s and early 70s. The six-wheeled uh, six uh, rover landed on the southern section of the Von Karman crater near the moon's south pole. Uh, Chinese media reported um, China's uh, news published a photo, which was taken by the probe on a never-visible side of the the moon. Uh, while photos normally are hidden far side of the moon, they have previously been taken from space. This would be the first image ever captured from the surface of the far side of the moon. But of course, China was able to get some really beautiful shots 
of the moon while on the surface, but also they got a nice picture of the Earth from the moon. I think this is really cool, and you should definitely check this out if you guys get a chance to. There's a whole bunch of pictures, and they're going to be exploring, checking out some rocks. Uh, most of the rocks are over four billion years old, and are being on the uh, f uh, f and being on the dark side of the moon makes communication a little more difficult because they're out of range, and the moon doesn't rotate. So the moon is basically kind of tethered to the Earth, part of the Earth's rotation, and so we see the same pattern on the moon because the moon doesn't shift. But we have, there are pictures of the dark side of the moon, and there is light that goes on all parts of the moon because a lot of times the moon goes in front of the sun area. All right. I mean, between the sun and the earth. So anyways, that's kind of what's happening there. Um, China now plans to begin fully operating its third space station by 2022 uh, to put astronauts on a lunar base by later in the decade to send probes to Mars, Mars, including ones that could return samples to the Martian surface back to Earth. So that's kind of what uh, China is hoping to do in the foreseeable future. All right, so those are kind of the things that are happening. I got some new programs going to be airing on MCAT for you, um, so you guys can enjoy some of these brand new programs that will be airing on MCAT. Cardinals, archbishops, bishops, priests, and sisters from across the nation came to celebrate the significance of the remarkable invitation made by the Indian tribes, which resulted in the arrival of six Jesuit missionaries 100 years earlier. An amphitheater seated hundreds, while thousands stood throughout the pontifical mass. The Salish Indians themselves are a tribute to the lasting effects of the early efforts of the Jesuit fathers to prepare the Indians for the onslaught of Western migration, which so decimated the tribes when two cultures clashed. A great many of young men are not qualified to take on a classical education. The result is that after graduating, they feel as though they should adopt some profession, which in many cases they are unable to succeed in. I therefore think that they should be considerable dis discrimination made and that young men who are better fitted for business than for professional life should not spend so many years pondering over Latin and Greek, but would profit much more by a business education for which they are better adapted. Personally, I do not feel inclined to be very liberal in promoting the cause of education when there are so many people starving or at least suffering from the necessities of life. Therefore, I could not undertake to contribute to the association fund. So, I've decided now, just like Harry said, he's a beady-eyed son of a <laughs> He was just as, as cool, calm, and collected as that tombstone. I mean, he was just nothing phased. He was just matter-of-fact and unflappable. Uh, we also, of course, brought in Harvey Pounds and questioned him. And, and the grand jury was unable to indict anybody, although they actually came closer to indicting uh, Harvey Pounds, the husband, than they did Wayne Nance. But all this kind of goes into the into the war of Missoula. And things go on until uh, the early 80s. And uh, all of a sudden, in the early 80s, you start finding dead bodies of females out east of Missoula.
Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk about some movies that are coming out, and we're kicking it off with another Saw-esque type movie. Try to get out uh, as far away as you possibly can. So let's talk about some crappy movies that are coming out this week. There aren't too many, but I'm going to be talking about them anyways. Um, Escape Room, which is the newest and probably only new movie that's really coming out. They have a group of diverse individuals ranging from all abilities and all sorts of smarts and all walks of life forced to work together to solve an escape room that might kill them. I'm pretty sure that the... Um, the faceless protagonist that you can insert yourself in will probably survive with everyone else kind of dying along the way. One of them becomes like super like, I'm going to kill you, but that's the only way I could survive any means necessary. You know, might is right. They'll probably die, blah, blah, blah. Because, you know, karma, that kind of thing. Anyways, you have an emotionless protagonist where you usually have to insert yourself in the role and you know who's going to live and who's going to die, obviously. Just look at the top billing. Um, up next, we got a movie. We're back, a dinosaur story, but this dinosaur is former Vice President Dick Cheney. Um, in what is Christian Bale's latest attempt to live as a man who's had more heart attacks than F. Scott Fitzgerald? Uh, you might have to look that up. Anyways, watch another movie that has turned uh, a dark story for, of corruption and greed into a farce comedy about the like, life of Dick Cheney. He's basically dead, and modern science keeps him alive. Question mark? And finally, we got this movie. It's a re-release uh, from back in 1966. Um, from the 1966 movie about the nun who's in over her head when she takes her vinyl vows. And things get a little bit weird um, because that's basically like the Ari Randy Grande song where, um, you know, like, thank you, next, where it's like, um, first one tested me, second one uh, tested my patience, and the last one uh, taught me pain. So that's basically uh, this movie. But it's 1966. It's a French movie called The Nun, not to be confused with the horror movie that just came out, but the horrors of potentially burning in hell because this movie will test her faith and then some. And so can you. Um, so that pretty much does it for uh, Pre-Critic. If you are interested in finding out more, uh, watch me every Friday while I talk about this. But anyways, I have a movie for you guys. It is awesome. It is from the Flagship Program, and it is Flagship Friday. And when I come back, I'm going to talk about some art fart stuff. All right. I'm ready. What are you doing? You getting ready to go home for the night? Can I go home with you? Yeah, I don't think I have any plans. Yay. I'm going to go get my stuff. Yeah. Great. Uh, what's so funny? Do I know you? No. Okay, then what are you doing here? Hey, where did she go? Is that Olivia's favorite shoe? That must be her shoe. I gotta go find her. <laughs> I have you now, Lydia. I've never been kidnapped before. Is it fun? How did you know my name? Because. Have you been stalking me? Are you an evil person? No. Oh, you're not? I was really hoping I could be an evil person. Why did you kidnap me if you're not an evil person? Because I want you. Well, then doesn't that make you an evil person? No. Oh. Well, can I just, like, go then? Can I? What's it like to be kidnapped? Is it fun? No. Have you ever kidnapped anybody? No. Well, why did you kidnap me? Take her to the dungeon. What? You have a dungeon? That is cool. I'm never gonna find you. Lydia! <sighs> I'm never gonna find her this way. Hello! Ah! How are you? Uh, good. Who are you? I'm... The receptionist. Uh, okay. How may I help you? My friend Lydia um, just somehow disappeared, and I can't find her. And she left her shoe. <laughs> I'll help you find your friend, but you have to give me three things. And what are they? Paper, scissors, and colored markers. Okay. But where am I gonna get them? Wait, where did you go? Oh, I guess I'll go 
try to find those things. Can I have my shoe back? No. Aww. Oh good, I had to go to the bathroom anyway. That a cute right there. That ought to stop her. Wonder where those three items could be. Oh, wow. That was easy. Keeps me away from over there. I always, I always forget her name. Um, what are the three items for? One second. Whoa, what's happening? What is happening? Um, what are you doing? Okay, <sighs> I'm done. Here's a dog that will find your friend. How is this dog supposed to help find the dog? Um, hello? Are you still there? I wonder how this dog will help me. The power of friendship. All right, let's move on. Let's talk about some uh, some things that are happening um, all over the uh, Missoula down. It is First Friday. Let me talk. Uh, let me tell you about all the art galleries you guys can check out. These are all the brand new stuff that are happening the month of January and maybe beyond. So, First Friday, Under the Stars by Laura Blue Palmer at Bernice's Bakery. You can check all this out. Uh, they cr she created an oil painting uh, collection of starry-filled skies and moons. Each are an exploration of color and light through many evenings of sky washing. No two of her paintings are quite the same. And you can check that out at Bernice's. Um, also, and most of these events are happening from um, 5 to 8 p.m. roughly, but there's always something happening for uh, First Friday as well. So, making Maker Friday, and this is Glass Carrots, and this is at Noteworthy Paper and Press. You can start off the New Year's for upcoming Maker Friday, and they're th thrilled to do the Grass Carrots next month. Uh, Grace Kari um, is an artist based Missoula in. Uh, <coughs> oh, sorry. I'm trying to reword a lot, a lot of the stuff. She loves pen, paper, and the great unknown. She enjoys making the same thing over and over again um, out of different materials to see if it fits on different perspectives of her uh, guise of art. So you can check all that out. Grass carrots at Noteworthy Paper and Press tonight at 5 p.m. There's the 47th annual uh, benefit auction. Most of these auctions auction off uh, some of the... Uh, 
art installations um, that have been donated to the Museum Art Museum over the years, and they use this to raise money to help pay for uh, their museum and their staff and everything else in between. And this is a great benefit for uh, Museum Art Museum, so they can keep it free for anybody who just wants to just wander in. It's free admission, free expression, and check it out. You can get your tickets for the forty seventh annual benefit art auction before they sell out. But this is the first Friday, so it's open for everybody because the auction usually is the Saturday preceding first Friday. So I'll tell you guys a little bit more as it comes up. All right. So up next, we got Stephen Blukert. Um, I, I know Jack. Um, this is something that probably seems like he got in an argument with his wife. Um, Gallery 709 Inside Mon Montana Art and Framing. Uh, Gallery 709 uh, is featuring Steve Glukert from January 4th to the 26th. I Know Jack is a series of drawings completed in 2018 as a tribute to Jack um, Franzevic, uh, his former art professor at the College of Great Falls, where he studied in the early 70s, opens first Friday, and this is going on from 5 to 9 p.m. at the 709 Ronan Street, which is the Gallery 709. Up next, we got another uh, po uh, pottery, music, and free tea. And this is like Missoula Tea Company. They will be bringing the New Year with their local tea, Ware Potters. UM Ceram Ceramic students, Esma Olive Broody uh, Janigo and Ke uh, Kelly She. Uh, um, well, okay, sorry. I'm I'm really terrible at pronouncing some of these names. And they will be there to chat about their wonderful handmade teaware. Join them is uh, local hand drummer uh, Mateo Hunter and his crew of talented musicians. And they'll have some tea samplings as well. Up next, they have Dance in Black and White. This is a photography deal, and they uh, f photograph people in black and white with low writing, but this is a passion for dance and photography come together in this e exhibit, Dance uh, in Black and White. Sorry about that. My phone went off. By photographer William uh, Minos. Uh, everything is about motion, love, and spirit. Dancers express a full range of human experiences and um, stop motion uh, in split seconds through a lens of a camera enabling us to see greater detail and spark our creative imagination. And a lot of times, black and white uh, pictures have been pretty much uh, the beginning of taking photos. And a lot of times, the black and white photo stuff has a lot more refined edges to see the details of some of the things, especially with great shadow play. And this is happening at the Four Ravens Gallery tonight at 5 p.m. Bernice's Bakery. Uh, never mind. I already did Bernice's Bakery. That's it. That's all you need to know about what's happening in the art museums uh, in and around the city of Missoula and beyond. <coughs> So, I have an art clip for you guys, and this is going to be ending in February, and this is uh, basically featuring, uh, let's see, I want to make sure I'm getting it right, it's Harold uh, Schuzauser, and it's Living in a Good Dream, and this is going to be in the MAM for your first Friday. So here's a little taste, but there's more to this than meets the eye. Hey guys, welcome back. I want to thank Rick Philp for providing those art clips and more. Um, let's talk about some events that are happening within the city of Missoula. If you're interested in doing some indoor indoor activity fun, uh, uh, MISA, uh, the Missoula Indoor Sports Arena, Mismo Gymnastics and Rich Sports Center is a good way for your kids to stay warm 
but stay active. Tiny Tales and Storytime are happening at the Missoula Public Library. It starts every uh, pretty much most mornings around 10.30 a.m. with 2 p.m. afternoon stuff happening in the weekend. But this is a good way for kids to learn nine new words a day, according to the librarians at the Missoula Public Library. Uh, Hands-on Science, Astronomy, 11 a.m. Spectrum Discovery Center. The Spectrum Discovery Center is open for visitors of all ages to explore science through engaging in exhibits and activities. Explore the cosmos with... Uh, with us as they investigate stars, Earth, and our solar system in the Discovery Bench today. Um, yarns and Watercolor at the Missoula Public Library. Hey, you like to do some art? You do some watercolor? Starting at noon today at the Missoula Public Library, they have that. But if you just want to stitch and make your own clothes and that kind of thing, Yarns is also happening there. And they usually happen within the public library. Um, Cribbage and Bridge, uh, Missoula Senior Center. Um, happens pretty much every Friday. If you want to do some cribbage, you want to do some bridge, you can enjoy that and more. Family fun time at the YMCA. Uh, this is uh, pretty cool. This is from 3.30 to 5.30 with parents, um, with a parent night starting at 6, which goes until 10. So if you want to hang out with your family, from uh, 5 30 to uh, from 3 30 to 5 30 hang out with your family you can also leave your kids there um, for 27 dollars and it's 15 dollars for each additional kid so these are for kids age about 4 to 11 and they also have care for really young infants who range, range from th birth to three years of age so they have all sorts of care p available for those kids and as well. Teen Writers Group, don't forget about the writing contest um, is happening, uh, is due uh, February 15th. You can go to the Missoula Public Library to find out more. Teen Writers Group happens every Friday at 3.30, usually after school, but since there's no school this week, 3.30 p.m. happening in the Missoula Public, Club Public Library like every single Friday. Predator Feeding, Missoula Sectarium, they'll be feeding a cricket to one of the hungry predators at 4 p.m. Every Friday, join us as they explain and demonstrate how to capture and consume their prey. Come see who is hungry today. And then, of course, you know everything else with your first Friday deal. So I'm just going to skip all over that. And we're going to talk about some of the late night events that you guys can go to as well tonight. Um, all is calm. Painted with a twist. They're going to be doing some uh, painting um, stuff. A lot of... Uh, um, Items are provided. Painted with a Twist is a or, uh, is an organization that I just discovered. It's in the uh, Stevens Center. Uh, it's basically behind um, CVS Pharmacy, and you you can't miss it. Um, and it's basically where they just kind of hang out and paint. It's just kind of hang out and paint place. Um, and that's happening tonight. Um, also, Idle Ranch Hands is going to be at the Planet of the Union Club, and at Rot Rot Gut. Wines, uh, with an H, um, will be playing at the uh, Top Hat Lounge. There's going to be rock, music, blues, um, all sorts of things happening tonight as well. But I'm just going to dive right into Saturday. If you guys are interested in doing some farmer's market stuff, hey, you want to get some supplies, you want to get some knickknacks, you want to get some bread, um, Winter Market continues at the Missoula Senior Center from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. They try to feel the, uh, the gap that is the farmer's market in the summer, which lasts basically from as soon as the weather gets a little bit warmer to a little bit cooler. It is a good reason resource for anybody who wants to just uh, buy local. Uh, Puzzle Club at ba Black Hat Bakery, which is every Saturday at 9 a.m. Hey, if you like puzzles and you like coffee and you like just bake, bake goods and just want to hang out and do puzzles, go to Black Hat. Learn to ice skate. It's Bring a Friend Day, Glacier Ice Rink. Uh, Saturday, this is from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. That's a short amount of time to learn to skate, but this is a free skating session. There'll be games, demos, and raffle giveaways. Coach will be available to give pointers, and you can register for the next Learn to Skate session. Uh, while you're there, um, no tickets required. Just show up. And this can be a glacier ice drink from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. Winter Storytelling, Nez Pierce Stories with J.R. Spencer. This is going to be at Traveler's Rest State Park Visitor Center and at 11 a.m. J.R. Spencer is a Nays Pierce storyteller, singer, singer of traditional songs and musicians uh, share stories about that go along with the skills and story of the Nez Pierce people and the campsites they used. Most of the stories come from a time known as the oh, Tetawati Yayat. Uh, which means Legend Day, that gives a feel of Nez Pierce legend and what people are talking about. This is five dollars per person, and if if you're a member, you're free. Uh, kids Jelly painting with a twist. Looking for your kid to take out uh, fun in the Saturday afternoon. Come to the join. Um, come in, join, and do some uh, painted jellyfish. Um, your kids will have a blast. You'll have another hour and a half to yourself. Instruction is guided and supplies are provided. But MCAT's better because you have four hours to yourself with MCAT Saturday drop-ins. For only $10, you can drop off your kids aged 9 to 13 years of age. We're usually pretty uh, um, <coughs> flexible when it comes to ages. Um, 
a lot of times, like, so if you have a younger sibling, let's say you're, you're, you have a 10 year old and an eight year old, that's perfectly fine dynamic right there. If you want to bring in an eight year old, um, uh, but yeah, so that's something to think about. It happens every single Saturday at MCAT from 1 to 5 p.m. 500 North Higgins, Suite 105. It's right across from Missoula Textiles. It's on the awning that says MCAT. You can't miss it. You just walk on down a ramp, knock on a door, and here we are. We're open from – oh, I'm, I'm just, like, totally pushing MCAT, so just so you guys know. 1 to 5 p.m. Saturday drop-ins for kids age 9 to 13. Um, open hours in the makerspace of the Missoula Public Library. This happens from 2 to 6 p.m. So you drop off your kid. You go to makerspace. You – 3D print some stuff for them. It's a great, you can do projects of, of all sorts of different dynamics and you can learn sorts of things. They have a, a bunch of workshops at the Missoula Public Library as well. Um, MCAT will be live streaming Saturday as well, starting at 4.15, uh, around 4, 4.15, 4.20, whatever. Don't read into that. Okay, so uh, MCAT will be live. It'll be um, doing the live basketball game uh, b between the boys, uh, Sentinel versus Helena. And it'll be at Sentinel, which will be live streaming on MCAT on our Facebook page. So you have to uh, like MCAT, Missoula's Community Media Resource, on our Facebook page. Yes, you have to write that all out. And you can find us. And if you like us, you get notified when we go live. Unless you turn in for the notifications, then forget about it. Uh, men's basketball, but also University of Montana. If you want to watch this game and then go on to the University of Montana's basketball uh, game, it's men's uh, Grizz basketball versus Portland State. And that's happening tonight, uh, tomorrow night at 7 p.m. And other things that are happening on your Saturday night as well is, let me just uh, double check, the Tomcats Union Club, Rooster Sauce, uh, rock music at the top hat, absolutely with Chris Moon of the Badlanders, DJ. All sorts of things happening Saturday night. But there is a couple Sunday night events I just want to kind of breeze through because they have an art supply swap at a Cool Art Club. It's 15, 517 Phillips Street, Montana. Um, Missoula, sorry. Sorry, it's Phillips Street in Missoula, Montana, of course. Why am I saying Missoula, Montana? But it's 517 Phillips Street. And it's Art Supply Swap. And this is going to basically be happening. Um, they say it's their first annual. Ha! Um, <laughs> nerds. Uh, <laughs> they all have <laughs> art supplies. And they have touched in a while. You can't have an annual unless you have... Um, it just only counts as an annual if you say second annual, but it, you can't say first annual because it, it doesn't have an annual preceding it. So anyways, they have all crafts, um, and they will be going to new hobbies, and this is from 12 to 6 p.m. So you have all day Saturday, uh, all day Sunday to do an art swap. So if your art supplies be like, uh, I, didn't, I didn't use acrylics anymore. Those are so um, last year. I'm now going to use ceramics. So you can do that kind of stuff and trade and swap and do all the sorts of stuff. Or you can use your money to pay for some things, but it's all just a bunch of artists coming together to uh, swap art and swap uh, supplies as well. So I'm going to end it there. Um, if you want more information, you go to uh, MissoulaEvents.com Net, Missoula Events.net is your staple for what's going on in Missoula, and you have too many reasons um, to be like, hey, what do you want to do? Let's go to Missoula Events.net. It's like, how about this? No. How about this? No. How about this? You have too many choices. So we are spoiled with Missoula Events.net. All right. Let me talk about uh, a couple things for MCAT. Um, MCAT will be uh, doing our regular hours next week, uh, Tuesday through Friday from 11 to 7. If you're interested in being a part of MCAT, orientation is every Wednesday at 5.30 p.m. Anybody who wants to come in and check out any of our equipment and more, you can go to MCAT.org. Um, you can email us, MCAT at MCAT.org. You can call us at 542-6228, otherwise known as 542-MCAT. And it's MCAT's new and future home. is going to be the new public library, which is why I usually like to talk a a lot about the library events that are happening. Um, so we'll be doing um, some things at the library pretty soon once we move in. So look for those and more. But if you want more information about my morning show, you go to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. So nice, we made you write it out twice. And you can find out more. You can find videos, other things, uh, galleries and pictures and stuff. You can come to contact us if you want to be on our show. Um, I just want to say that you can totally check out the full version of Dude I Just Drew, which is a new show that I hope to be producing in the next couple of weeks. We'll have a flagship Friday video for you guys. Dub and stuff will be returning next week. Um, I was just getting out of my vacation. I was just like, eh, I don't need dub and stuff this week, so I'm going to do dub and stuff next week. If you don't know what dub and stuff is, you don't watch the show, so who cares? Uh, <laughs> so for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp. I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. I have a special music for you guys as I made this myself through GarageBand. So prepare yourself. <laughs>